section 1.4 comparing and ordering integers by talking about some sets of numbers that you should already be familiar with if not it's a good review the very first one the natural numbers those are the that's the first set of numbers that you learn when you're a little kid the counting numbers one two three four five you'll notice that the symbol for the natural numbers looks like a capital N with an extra slash through it then you add zero to the natural numbers and you get the second set which are the whole numbers and again, the symbol looks like a capital W with an extra slash. And as you can see, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, the three dots and so on. Then the set that we're going to spend some time on in uh, the remainder of this chapter is the set of integers. Now, the set of integers would be all of the whole numbers and all of their opposites. And I'm going to define opposites. You should already have a pretty good idea what they are. And as you can see, it's a capital Z with an extra slash through it for the symbol. And it's dot, 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 and so on, up to negative 3, then negative 2, then negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And those are the numbers that we normally put on, you got it, the number line. The number line comes in handy for uh, a variety of things, but one is for ordering, to help us to compare which, ones are, which numbers are bigger than other numbers and to put them in a specific order. So we're going to do both of those kinds of examples here. And the first one is going to be putting them in order from least to greatest. It says here, use a number line to order from least to greatest. And you can see I have 6, 9, negative 5, negative 7, negative 3, 2, and 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of be lazy. I'm going to circle the 6. I'm going to circle the 9. I'm going to circle the negative 5. I'm going to circle the negative 7. I'm going to circle the negative 3. I'm going to circle the 2, and I'm going to circle, well, I already have a 6, I don't need to do it twice. I'll leave that as is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them in the order from left to right, because that's from least to greatest. The numbers get bigger to the right, they get smaller as you go to the left. These are your positive integers, or your natural numbers. These are your negative integers. So that would be negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, 2, 6, and 9. And there are your numbers in order. Now, now I'm going to compare two integers using the less than sign. Remember, this is the less than sign. Or I'm going to use the greater than sign. Some people have trouble remembering which one's which. I always thought that this looked a little bit like the letter, capital letter L, just kind of tipped a little bit. And L stands for less than. So if that helps you to remember, that's great. Uh, the other people remember the alligator mouse. So now I have negative 7 and I have a positive 4. Well, as we know, you can look at the number line to remind yourself, any positive number is bigger than any negative number. So this negative number is smaller than 4, so I'll use a less than. Now when you're comparing two negatives, the bigger the negative number appears to be, the actually the smaller it is. You can see where negative 8 is way down here to the left as compared to negative 2. So you can see negative 8 is smaller than negative 2 because it's to the left of negative 2 on the number line. So this is also a less than. Now I want to look at the two numbers here, negative 3 and 3. Now I've already circled negative 3, so I'll put a little box around it here, and I'll put a little box around positive 3. Now notice here that these two numbers are 1, 2, 3 units from the 0, 1, 2, 3 units from the 0, or the origin on the number line. They have the same physical distance, one's just to the left, one's to the right, but they're both three units from the zero on the number line. So that gets us to a key definition down here, the absolute value of a number. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on a number line. So whether it's a positive or negative, the distance is going to be considered a positive idea. And these bars that I have around the negative seven here represent the absolute value symbol. So this is saying, the absolute value of negative 7. Well, the absolute value of negative 7 is how far negative 7 is from 0 on the number line. As you can see, it's 7 units. So this is equal to 7. The absolute value of 9, 9 is way over here. 9 is 9 units away from 0 on the number line. So this, of course, is 9. And the only number absolute value trying to get, uh, it's kind of an oddball one because how far is 0 from 0 on the number line? Well, 0 is right at 0, so the absolute value of 0, as you might guess, is 0. Okay, one more I wanted to do. The absolute value of negative 98. Now, the reason I have that up there is because no one wants to draw a number line 
that goes all the way down to negative 98 and sh still shows zero. But we don't need to because we know that negative 98 is 98 units to the left of zero on the number line. So the absolute value is 98. Now notice that when two numbers have the same absolute value, like 3 and negative 3, they have their own name. We call those opposites. Two numbers that have the same absolute value, and as I mentioned, negative 3 and 3, negative 5 and 5. When you put the negative sign in front of the end, the opposite sign in front of the end, this is read the opposite of n. Now, we don't call this the opposite of 3 because 3 is a number. We just call it negative 3. You could call it the opposite of 3 because the opposite of 3 is negative 3. But we call this the opposite of n, not negative n, because we don't, negative n implies that it might be negative, and we don't know what n represents. If n is a positive, yeah, the opposite of n would be negative, but if n is negative, the opposite would be positive. So that's a little misleading. And now, some examples. Evaluate the expression when x is negative 5. So the very first one is the opposite of x. So I am taking the opposite of negative 5. Well, we know that's 5. Here I have 13 minus the absolute value substitute in of negative 5. We'll do this part first. 13 minus the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Now it's easy. Over here, very similar, take the uh, negative 5, substitute in. This is the absolute value of negative 5 plus 7. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and 5 plus 7 is 12. And the weird one of the bunch, I put an opposite sign in front of the absolute value. But we still substitute the number in first. I have the opposite of the absolute value of negative 5. Now, this part right here, ignore this. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So this is the opposite of... 5 or negative 5. Now you'll get good at these, but you have to you have to spend some time going through this, and again, you should be taking notes on this so you can refer back to it. And as always, remember to practice, practice, practice.